Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Taehwa, and I'm second year PhD student at Carnegie Mellon. I'm happy to share our work at, as a last presenter today. Our project is Pantuena, and this work with, with my advisor, Chris Harrison. We envision full body pose reconstruction in metaverse for better immersion in virtual reality. Mouse pose sensing is particularly important. A large body of literature says if facial expressions match to situational content and spoken content, it can increase trust and clarity among users. As most this is important uh, problem area, there has been several work reconstructing mouse pose in VR. The most popular method is mounting camera in front of the user's uh, face or wide-angle camera in the headset. But these optical methods still raise privacy issues, capturing close-up body parts as well as background image. Next popular method is using uh, audio from people's speech. Specific sounds such as ooh or ah generally form a certain mouse poses, and it can be utilized. But this method is not generalizable to silent speech uh, detection, uh, silent speech, um, silent facial expression. And here's a video, it's a clear example. I'm smiling, but virtual avatar could not track silent facial expression. Last, um, in biosensing method, sensor in the headset injects signals into the skin, but it requires the sensor consistently touching the skin to work and often require calibration each time whenever system is worn. Pantuena does not require any images or audio, neither require direct contact, yet it is low profile that is suitable for health and form factor. Okay, then now let's see how does this work. Here's an antenna and it radiates the electromagnetic wave. As human tissue is a conductive in RF signals, uh, human face is electromagnetically coupled to the antenna and affect the signals. When the signal meets the face, partial uh, signals is reflected back because of the impedance discontinuity between antenna and the face. The reflected signal could be observed with different magnitude. Also, the reflected signal's face can vary. Now we have two data points. We can further sweep the frequencies of injected signals and see the frequency response. Any phase deformation, such as opening mouse, affect the antenna signal. We can introduce uh, one more antenna to capture the transmitted signal. Then we finally get four signal lines for better sensing. So let's look at the signal from our prototype. It would be better to see actual signal from the live demo. So I'm, I prepare live demo, but the, it requires the internet connection. Hopefully, this internet connection is working well. Let me first connect the headset to the computer. I see. Uh, display. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me open the um, our signal visualizer. And whenever I'm talking, you can see the signal is changes. And let me show you some clear example. If I close my mouse and open my mouse, there's very consistent changes in signal. And now I'm gonna open my demo. And here's the avatar. And whenever I'm talking, you can see the mouse pose is also changes in the avatar. And 
Let me try to smile. <laughs> and you can also do different type of smile. Smile teeth. <laughs> and smile open. And mouth open. And tough cheek. All right, it was my live demo. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, we support two types of application. And my advisor, Chris, is wearing the headset. <laughs> and OK, then how could, it, how could we get here? Uh, how to make such kind of system? We had several antenna design iterations for performance optimization. This antenna design process was boosted with electromagnetic field computer simulation. Because of time limitation, I will briefly summarize the main findings. For more details, please refer to our paper. In the first design, the slot antenna topology was selected. Slot antenna has a couple of advantages. It is low profile, and it has a directional radiation pattern, potentially reduce the noise pickup from the environment and hand gestures. We also explored the opportunity to have secondary antenna. The main finding in this exploration is polarization matters. If two antenna have different polarization, the interaction between two antennas are less, rather better coupling effect is formed between antenna and the mouse. The better coupling improves the signal discrimination by mouse pose changes. Okay, now we finalize the antenna configuration. These two antennas enhance the asymmetry for better sensing performance. We optimize the uh, operating frequency, and our antenna is working from 2.2 .2 to 3.4 gigahertz. This is over hardware configuration. The final antenna is attached underneath the MetaQuest 2 headset, and it is connected to vector network analyzer to inject the signal and measure the signal. So how good is our technique? We conducted user study to address critical questions on feasibility and accuracy across two different application contexts. One, uh, facial expression. Two, uh, speech mouse movement. We recruited 12 participants. We used vision-based method for our ground truth data collection. In wearable, repeatability is important, so we in included that factor in our user study. We collected one data set and completely removed the headset and then we collect the validation uh, data set. This allowed the com comparison between um, performance drop off when uh, has said we weren't. Here's a diagram of 10 facial expressions that we investigated. And here's the result. For within one session, the tracking is within 1.9 millimeter precision, which is very accurate. If user re-wear the headset without calibration, the tracking accuracy is 2.8 millimeter, which is still very respectable. If the specific user's training data is not in the uh, data is not in the training set, then the accuracy drops to six millimeter uh, error. These are speech mouse uh, the tracking accuracy result. Quite accurate, around two millimeter of tracking error uh, overall. So despite respectful accuracy of Pantuena, there is a limitation. To achieve universal model for across user, the better software algorithm, such as fusion learning, would be expected in calibration step to compensate various individual differences in facial geometry and bioimpedance. Next, an antenna tilted radiation beam forming can allow the thinner, even thinner form factor and robust sensing. And we did not explore the reflexive signal from the second antenna uh, because our off the shelf VNA does not provide it. But we, if we can use this signal, then the sensing can be more robust. And I also mentioned the faster VNA sleep would be required because in our paper it was 10 FPS, but I already improved that with different hardware. Uh, now it's around 25 FPS. Okay, so thank you so much for attending our talk, and I'm happy to take questions from now.